We rewind to chapter 154 as Isagi thinks about the place where it's the hottest, which isn't Germany, but rather PXG. This is because Julian Loki caught his eye in chapter 91, where he completely humiliated the egoists through his speed. The person who will be going to Bastard Munchen in his place is going to be someone irrelevant like Kento. PXG is a league that is acting as a gateway to success for newcomers and young players, as their market has received a lot of investment in recent years, so there's a lot of money to be found. They're in a great spot to become the greatest league in the world as well. Ego Jinpachi awaits their entrance now as he welcomes them to the PXG team and introduces them to the rising star with the most attention from football fans at the moment called Loki the God Sprinter. After Rin realized that Isagi was going to PXG, he was going crazy because he didn't want to see his face after the humiliation he just went through in the U-20 match. However, the rest are excited about Isagi on the team, including Shidu, as he tells Rin that he does doesn't understand talent. Loki allows the egoists more freedom in their training, so they started to train in preparation for their first match against Ubers, and Isagi figured that he had to focus a lot on his physicality first to be able to keep up with people like Rin and Shidu on a more consistent basis. We get to the PXG versus Ubers match now as Baru and Isagi had their reunion, and Baru was interrogating Isagi with the fact that Ubers was going to completely destroy them. The PXG formation will be the 3-4-3 with Renoir on goal, Michelin, Gabon, and Chapa on defense. Charles Chevalier, Tokimitsu, Karasu, and Zantetsu are in the midfield with Shidu left wing, Isagi right wing, and Itoshi Rin as the striker. Ubers their formation was a 3-5-1-1 with Canali on goal, and Ryu, Lorenzo, and Aiku in defense. Abdi, Drago, Nico, Perone, and Rico at the midfield. Sendu was the center forward, and Baru was the pure striker. If you resonate with my content, consider subscribing. The highly anticipated game finally starts as P PXG starts with the ball, as Karasu and Zantetsu use their chemistry to get past Ubers their midfield. But little did they know that Don Lorenzo anticipated where their attack was headed and stole the ball through his zombie defense. He went up the field now as he easily dribbled past some of the PXG players. This works because as soon as Lorenzo steals the ball, they make a switch, as it's a flexible system where Nico drops back to play center back, while Lorenzo participates in the attack, sending the field into a state of total confusion. Lorenzo passed the ball to Baru now, but just as he was about to get the ball, Charles got in his way through the use of his metavision and stole the ball from him. It's time for their counterattack now as Charles passes the ball around for a bit while gradually moving up the field. Charles finally decides to pass to Itoshi Rin as he scored the first goal in the match. Isagi was furious as he wasn't able to do anything. The game restarts as Ubers is the one going on the attack now. They're prioritizing possession and slowly making their way up as Charles was able to see everything. When Sendai was about to pass to Baru, Charles saw it and intercepted the ball yet again. But Ubers, their press was so good that Nico got the ball off Charles through a coordinated attack. Nico moved up the field now with the others as it was time for King Baru to shine. They passed the ball around some more in the front line as Canali didn't even know who had the ball anymore. And before he could even see anything, it was already too late as the ball was about to go inside of the net. Later on, we find out that Baru uses its senses to see the moment its prey relaxes and drops its guard, and goes for a split-second blind spot as Baru scored through his stealth kill shot, making the game tied. The game restarts again as Zantetsu passed to Shidu. They were going up with their combinations, but Aryu was in the way as he jumped incredibly high and got the ball to Lorenzo. But before he could even touch it, Carls was in the way yet again as he stole it through his metavision as it got stolen by Nico this time, which is when we find out that he has metavision as well. The ball was thrown in by Karasu as he passed the ball to Shidu who moved up towards the 16-meter box. He dashed past some people, but suddenly they got into an awkward position with three people going for the same ball. Tokimitsu tries to hold Nico at bay through his physicality, but Charles gets the ball as he realized everything that was going on and was in the perfect position to get the job done. He moves up the field through his combinations with Shidu this time around as he got closer to the net, but Aiku didn't like that as he saw right through Shidu's specs. On his right, he suddenly sees that Isagi tried to assert himself, and she Shidu reacts to that through a pass, 
but Lorenzo got in the way again. But before that, Rin told him that he finally took his eyes off the price and moved through some of the Uber's defenders. Aiku was blocking his shot trajectory, but he used Ryu to get in the air and proceeded to do an upside-down curved shot into the right upper corner, which got Bastard Munchen into the lead. Isagi and Shidu couldn't take it anymore, as Rin was stealing the spotlight from them. This was when Snuffy decided that it was time for him to enter the match as Loki went along with him. Snuffy subbed in for Sendu, and Loki subbed in for Isagi, with Isagi almost bursting out in tears because of his incompetence. The game restarted as Ubers went up with the ball. Meanwhile, Isagi calmed down on the bench as he thought deeply about the catalyst of all the attacks that led to a goal, which was when he realized that Charles was the mastermind behind all of it. It was at this moment that Isagi committed to observing Charles like crazy. Nico passed the ball to Lorenzo, but Charles saw through it again as Snuffy intercepted the ball before he could because of his threat level. And just like the rumors said, Snuffy noticed that Charles reads the game well as Loki decided to trap him together with Charles. But Snuffy managed to pass the ball to Lorenzo before any of that could happen. They passed around for a bit, but Loki caught up to Snuffy through his speed as he passed to Baru, who was in the 16-meter box. He shot the ball now, but really and Shidu blocked his shot course off. All the ball got placed at Snuffy's feet again. Snuffy went into a combination with the Ubers players again as the ball went to Baru at the end and got intercepted by Charles yet again. This was when Charles went up to Tokimitsu and asked him if he could man-mark Snuffy to make his job easier and decrease his options. Not just a typical man-mark, but protractor man-marking as he wants him to constantly position himself inside that two-meter radius, and if the ball comes inside that area, he is is free to go for the steal, but the most important thing is to keep him within that radius no matter what. And the plan succeeded as Charles stole the ball before it could get to Lorenzo. Aiku stole the ball from Charles though as he delivered a pass to Baru, who was about to shoot again. Baru shot the ball from Chapa his blind spot, but the PXG keeper was used to it now and got confidence that he could deflect that ball, which is exactly what he did as he threw the ball to Charles, who was trying to find the quickest path to the goal as he linked up with Loki. We go to Isagi on the bench now, as he is still closely looking at Charles, which was when he realized he has the upper hand in the way that he uses his eyes. You've basically got a central vision and a peripheral vision, as the peripheral vision is very important to sort out information about players and the ball. If he uses his central vision to focus only on the ball, he'd get less information, which leads to a slow assessment of the situation around you. But Charles is using his peripheral vision almost constantly to give himself an endless stream of information. By Constantly updating his database of teammates and opponents alike, he can use that overwhelming mass of data to calculate the optimal point that nobody else has grasped yet. Compared to what Isagi sees, Charles is viewing the field from a higher dimension if the field's state of play is a second dimension view, then visualizing the various players and the sort of plays you want to make is the third dimension. But Charles sees everything a bit differently as that dimension is even higher, where he watches players trying to make their ideal plays while looking for their mistakes mistakes and openings to better destroy them. Charles, his eyes and brain gave him a fourth dimensional view that transcends two and three dimensional views called metavision. The golden formula of Charles is metavision combined with chemical reactions. Isagi has figured out what Charles does, but now he just needs to find a way to use it to fight. But before he could come up with anything, Charles and Loki were at the 16 meter box as Loki rammed the ball into the net, which led to PXG winning the first match within the Neo Egoist League. Watch this video next where I explain every ability that Isagi has in Blue Lock.